Hey guys, it's Stephanie from Quilters Planner and today I'm going to show you how to use the Wing Clipper Flying Geese Trimming Tool. Do you say flying geese for one or is it a goose? No quilter can agree on that. A goose, a gosling, one flying, you don't know what I'm talking about at all. have had flying geese on the brain lately and I've been really having fun looking at all the different methods there are to make them. In my Facebook group, um, Quilter Splinter Facebook group, we came up with I think nine or ten different ways that you can make flying geese. There's a lot of specialty rulers out there and some other fun techniques because you don't have to do it the traditional way. So today I am going to show you how to use the wing clipper flying geese trimmer when you make four at a time no waste to flying geese. To make the no waste four at a time flying geese you are going to need one large focus fabric square and four small background fabric squares take a look at the paper that came with your wing clipper and it gives you a little chart that tells you exactly the size that these need to be pay attention because I've noticed that for the large square with the wing clipper method they've sized up their squares a quarter of an inch larger than the traditional four at a time method so make sure that you've lined up your squares, leaving a little bit of an edge around them, which is also different than the traditional four to time flying geese square method. And then we've drawn three lines, one down the center, which will be our cutting line, and then one on either side of the center line, a quarter inch away, and those are our sewing lines. I've pinned and I'm gonna go sew those lines and I will be right back. All right, so I've sewn my two seams on either side of the cutting line, and now I'm going to make a quick diagonal cut from one end to the other. And I'm going to press my little fox ears up. And in the wing clipper method, it mentions to press to the small side of the triangles, no matter whether you're dark or light. Okay, the next step is to add two more background squares to the corners of these semi-finished flying geese units, also leaving a little bit of red around the edges. So let's go sew those seam lines and then we'll cut again. Okay, we're going to make two more cuts. Here. And here. And now we're going to go back and press just like this and you're seeing your flying geese take shape. Okay, we now have our four flying geese and yours will have little dog ears here and a little dog ear at the top. So let's start trimming. I'm going to move these aside and let's look at this. Now we are making three and a half inch by six and a half inch flying geese. I want to show you the wing clipper here. Hopefully you don't have a glare. Um, we are making three and a half inch by six and a half inch flying geese. So you'll notice that there's a lot of measurements here. We are going to pay attention to the six and a half inch mark and the three and a half inch mark. And we have one other mark that's really important and it's where this X is, which is three and a quarter inch, which is where we want to put our tip of our triangle. So we're going to take our flying geese, gosling, goose, whatever unit, and we are going to put it, the tip of the triangle, right on this three and a quarter inch mark. That's exactly halfway between six and a half inches. And at the same time, we want to make sure that we have a quarter of an inch above our point of our triangle, and that's how we know what we can trim off. And in addition to that, I'm just kind of mixing it, moving it around and testing and seeing what I can do. You can see that if I trim here, I'm going to have a quarter of an inch above and I have some overhang on the six and a half inch and I have some overhang here on the three and a half inch and I'm just slightly short here. I'm going to give that a tug. That's kind of a pressing error, I think, and I can move the fabric around and show it who's boss. 
so I'm going to get exactly six and a half inches wide. All right, so let's go ahead and trim this dog ear off on the right. Trim the top. I have a nice new blade, so that came right off, which is so lovely. Always close your rotary cutter. And then we are going to flip around. And this time, we have another little tool that they give you on the ruler. At this end, there's another intersection. So now we're going to put our tip right there, and we're going to line up our diagonal lines. Look, we're beautifully at six and a half inches on that side. And again, let's tug this little end, get it where we want it to go. I might have to shift it up slightly. And we're going to cut on the right, cut on what's the bottom of our goose, and that's it. That is a beautiful flying geese unit. Let's do it with the other three. Now remember, when you're going to sew this together, the most important thing to remember is to put the second geese unit on top, right here, do a quick test to make sure you've folded it the correct way, and then you are going to sew your quarter inch seam, or scant quarter inch seam, and you're going to make sure that you sew your seam right here. You don't want to cross over this intersection. If you do, you're going to cut off your point. If you stay just a thread on this side, you're going to have perfect points every time. Okay, I can't wait to see you for the next time. I will show you another flying geese trimming method. But until then, have fun with this one.